morning, everybody. How we doing? It's uh, it's fall break. Can someone say amen? amen? Yeah, there you go. The excitement is just whew, it's in the room, you know. I'm just, yeah, didn't feel it, but that's okay. Um, hey, so uh, I'm super happy I get to speak today. It's, it's one of my favorite things to get to bring the word on Sunday. Just seeing y'all's faces, being able to challenge us, and I believe that's what today is going to be. Um, I believe that. The Lord has challenged me with something uh, in my personal life, and I want to share it with you if that's okay. And if it's not, too bad. We're going to do it anyway. So, um, so go ahead and turn to 1 Kings 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. We'll be uh, starting off in verses 5 through 7. Um, so go ahead and turn there. Uh, I've titled this message, Who Wants a Breakthrough? Um, and, uh, and I don't know about you, but if someone actually asked that in a room genuinely, hey, like, who wants a breakthrough? I'm probably going to jump up and sprint to the front and like grab that person and be like, it's me. I need it. Give it to me. Um, and so I believe it's an area in our lives that we all have. We all, we all need breakthrough in something, whether it's, whether it's our marriage, whether it's finances, whether, it's, uh, whether we're dealing with some type of stressor in our life, whatever it is, we all need some sort of, sort of breakthrough, right? We can, we can agree on that. And I believe the Lord is going to challenge us in this area, just like he did me. Um, and and if, it doesn't, if it doesn't hit you in a good way, that's okay. All right? We just had fun together, okay? So let's go ahead and read, starting in verse 5. So he proceeded to do what the Lord commanded. Elijah left and lived at the Wadi Cherith, where it enters the Jordan. The ravens kept bringing him bread and meat in the morning and in the evening. And he would drink from the wadi. After a while, the wadi dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Lord, we thank you so much for your word today. Lord, I pray that our lives will be built on this. That everything we say, every, every waking moment, every, everything in our marriage, everything in the way we, we father or mother our children, every way that we're a, a friend to people in our lives or in our workplace, I pray that it would be founded upon your word that that would be it, that would be the, the life source flowing within us. And Lord, I pray as I speak today that this wouldn't be about me, that if I'm making it about me, just help me stop in Jesus' name. I don't want to do that. There's something important that you have for us to grasp hold of today. And I want to grab it, and, and I want people here to grab it, Lord. And, and where I may be talking too much, just let your spirit override that, that we can learn something from you this morning. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey man, so hey, um, once upon a time I was uh, a senior in high school and uh, it was a long time ago and some of you are mad at me because I'm saying that and you're like, you're not that old, but it feels like it, okay? So, uh, so it, was, it was a while ago and I was going to Southeastern University, Southeastern Fire. Yeah, can I get a, I, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, we were actually the Crusaders at one point, but someone had enough sense at a certain point to be like, <sighs> We don't need to be called the Crusaders. Um, it's not a, good, not a good connotation of that. So they changed it, and we like the Holy Spirit, so fire sounded good. Um, so, we, so we're the Southeastern Fire, and I'm about to go, and, and I've got uh, one morning I woke up, and all of a sudden on my financial statement, it said I earned myself a scholarship. <laughs> I was like, man, I don't know how I did that. Um, but I, I was literally shocked. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. My GPA got me a scholarship of thousands of dollars every single year. That would be saving me money. Um, I don't have to pay that back, you know, it, it's going to be pretty cool. And so I go to Southeastern and, and quickly I made Southeastern about my social life more than I made it about my academic life. Has any, was anyone there in college? Or my, okay, cool, yeah, good. Um, all the young people are proud of it. Uh, they're like, yeah, we did something bad. Um, so I made those bad decisions over and over and it was, hey, intramural sports? or study for your test. You can guess which one I did. Um, hey, you wanna go get uh, uh, shakes with everybody at Steak and Shake, or are we gonna, uh, you know, you're gonna st uh, do that project that you've been talking about? Well, I'm gonna get shakes. That's, that's what I'm gonna do. And um, as you can imagine, my GPA went down. Uh, how do I say that nicely? It went down just a little bit, okay? Uh, and it went down enough that one morning I woke up, and guess what was gone? The GPA-based scholarship that I had received. And um, I, I'm not exaggerating, uh, because I know I'm not exaggerating, because I'm paying it back today. Um, so uh, paying a lot more money than I would have if I had kept with my schoolwork 
if I just stayed on top of it, if I had just done what I was supposed to do, but instead I was so distracted by all the extracurricular stuff, and I was like, I gotta hang out with people, I gotta do this, take a part of this. And let me tell you, when I lost that GPA, my prayer life got better, because I was like, Lord, help. Lord, I, 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 need, I need your help in school. I, I need to do well on these tests. I, I need to do well on this essay. Like, I, I really need your help, Lord. Give me breakthrough in academics. Give me breakthrough in my grades. Give me breakthrough with my teachers who hate me right now. Like, that, that's, I was praying that. And by the way, I know it's Family Sunday. Um, and parents, I want to apologize for this story. Because uh, if your kid's looking, they're like, oh, nice. That's what I was planning on doing. Not, uh, not the one to emulate in this area. And if you're emulating me in other areas, tell your parents, because uh, they might want to change that. Uh, but, but anyway, so my, my GPA, I get to this point and I go, you know what, I gotta, I gotta change this thing around. And so some of my priorities, I shaped them up a little bit um, and, and got better in school and uh, got some better grades and, and stuff like that. And I remember it was my junior year going into my senior year. And I looked at my dad, and uh, we were talking about school, and he's like, how are you feeling about your senior year? And, you know, my pride kind of came up, and I was like, well, just so you know, if I really wanted to be, like, on the dean's list this whole time, I could have done it. And, right, right. And he said, he said, then go do it. And I was like, maybe I shouldn't have said that. So, so I go to school, and, you know, I changed, I changed a lot. I changed the, my, my focus. I changed what I put my emphasis on in school, and I still had my, my life with friends, my social life, that was all still great, um, but school was important. And you know what I did? I got on the dean's list, you know? And so, so it was good, it was this good moment. And what amazed me is I was thinking about this moment as I go through the idea of breakthrough. This is what the Lord brought to mind. I was praying for something that God already gave me everything I needed to do well in. Like, I was like, Lord, help me with my grades. Lord, help me with my teachers. Like, help, help, me, help me do better in school. I was praying for breakthrough in an area that he already gave me everything I needed to succeed in. I was praying for him to work a creative miracle in my academics when he's like, go do it. Discipline yourself. I, 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 I've given you this opportunity. Don't squander it. What if the breakthrough was the opportunity? And I, and I tossed it away that first semester. Anyways, let's, let's hop back to our reading, because I believe that there's something in this that we can, we, can, we can take for ourselves. And so in this moment, right, there's a famine. There's a drought. It's dry. The crops are dying. The water's drying up. Things are not going well. And the Lord, after telling Elijah to command this over the land, the Lord tells him to go down to the river. And he says, hey, that's where you're going to drink from. That river, you're going to drink from right there. And then he says this, the ravens will bring you your food. I don't know about you, but first off, if a raven dropped food on my lap, I ain't eating it. Um, I'm just being honest. Like, I, I sound very unspiritual right now because I just, you know, went opposite than the Bible story. But I do want to tell you this too. How often when we read this, do we like emotionally detach ourselves from these stories? Like, it, come on. He was provided food by ravens. And sometimes I'll read it and I'll just gloss through that as if it's normal. That's not normal. It's not normal for birds to bring you food, okay? Just we got to get that straight. I mean, that would be like during COVID-19 if, like, all the little animals in Hendersonville brought me my groceries because they didn't want me going to the store. That's wild. That, I don't know. I mean, maybe to some of you that happened. Um, if it did, tell me. Uh, I want to know. But this is what I see in this story. We see this moment where we see this breakthrough in Elijah's life. I mean, he's in the middle of a famine. Everything he needs, it says they brought meat to him too. Like, not just bread, meat. That, that's amazing. And so we see this principle, and it leads me to my first thought, which is this. Breakthrough is often the fruit of obedience. Breakthrough is often the fruit of obedience in our lives. We need to obey the Lord. We need to obey the Lord. And the question that Elijah faces, just like many of us face in our life and all throughout the Bible, we see it. Am I going to listen to him or am I going to do my own thing? Am I going to follow God's ways or am I going to do what sounds right to a man? 
Am I going to do what makes sense in my world? And if I can be completely honest with you, let me just be candid. Some of you may disagree. God's will sometimes makes no sense to me. Like God's will sometimes, when I feel the Lord pressing something on my heart, I can sit there sometimes and go, I don't get it. I don't understand why you want me to do this. It doesn't even compute in my mind, why you would have me do this financially or why you would have me apologize to this person. Like, it doesn't make any sense in the moment. But I believe that some of us determine our obedience toward God based off what we can reason of his call. We determine our obedience by whether or not we can make sense of what he says or what he's showing us. Can I tell you that's not the gospel today? Can I just tell you, if, if, if you're living, I've done it, I have done it, that is not the gospel to say, well, I follow Jesus, but only when he makes sense. It ain't it. That's not it. That's not where we're called to live. You want to talk about breakthrough for your life? It's obeying and seeing God's will come to pass. That's breakthrough. That's breakthrough. And we watch Elijah then has this amazing breakthrough where his appetite is met. By birds, disgusting birds. I don't like birds, I'm sorry. I grew up in Connecticut and there are crows all over the place and I was like, BB gun, you know? Um, you know, I got this story, I'll share it real quick. Um, Brooke and I moved up here like two years ago. It's two years, yeah. Two years ago and uh, we had just sold our house in Florida um, and we were actually pretty upside down in our house. That's what we were told. We were, we were gonna owe a lot of money. We'd only lived there a year and a half. Um, so I was like, oh my gosh, Lord, I'm really trusting you right now. I need a breakthrough. And uh, we, were, we were just nervous. And we ended up getting a lot more money than we thought. And we ended up coming out like on top. So it was good. It was okay. It was good. But we moved here and uh, Brooke was not working. Uh, and, and the reason she was not working, because she had just birthed a human. So she had every right uh, to stop working for a little bit. Like uh, that woman is amazing. Yeah, I didn't even know what I was seeing in that moment. I was just like, okay, well, this is a miracle. So talk about breakthrough, childbirth. Um, but I just realized what that sounded like. Um, we'll move right past it. So she was, she was not working. And, and I was so, guys, I was so worried about finances. I mean, I, I was like... Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. and Jerry Maguire when he's like, show me the money. Like, that was me. I'm like, where is it? I need to find it. Like, I, what are we going to do? We got to make sure we can pay this. We can pay this. And we still owe from Crew's birth. That child owes me money. But so I'm, I'm freaking out. And I'm worshiping right there one day. And I'm like, Lord, I'm so distracted right now. I keep thinking about how we're going to make it through. I keep thinking about how you're going to lead us through this, and I don't even want to think about that right now. I just want to focus on you. I just want to worship you because you're worth it. I don't need you to do anything for you to be worth it. My life is yours. And I felt so clearly in my heart that I needed to take three months' worth, worth of expenses and put them aside from the sale of our house so that my wife didn't have to work at all or think about work for three more months. Can I tell you what I said in my heart? Are you sure? Like, that's, that's what I said. I'm like, Lord, I can't do that. You know I can't do that. We don't even have enough money right now. How am I supposed to use more of this? I mean, we were, we were blessed to be able to have anything from this house, and you want me to use almost the rest of it so that she doesn't have to work? I don't know what to do. But you want to know what I did? I obeyed. I obeyed, even though it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to me at all. I was like, Lord, you can't possibly be calling me to do this. But we did it, and we obeyed. And you want to know something? I know oftentimes it's easy to stand up here as a pastor and be like, the Lord will give you way more than you need. But let me just clarify that statement for a second. I think sometimes when we hear that, we think, wow, I'm just going to have like we're just going to be swimming in it. It's going to be absolutely wonderful. I'm going to do this, so then the Lord will give me all these things. That's not what we're trying to communicate. What we're trying to communicate is that God knows what you need. God knows your needs. Not just not the outer things, not the low-hanging fruit. He knows your core needs. Right? That, that is so important for us to understand that we have a Father who desires to meet our needs. You want to know what he said to my thoughts? He said, 
He didn't care what I thought she needed. He didn't care what I thought I needed. He didn't care what I wanted to do with the money. He said, I've got a plan here. And my idea is to take care of your wife more than it is to take care of your finances right now. So that's what you need to do. And I humbled myself, which is a rare occasion, okay? Um, but I humbled myself and I said, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'll do it. I'll do it. And we came out on the other side of that, not with a crazy amount more money, but with more between us than we ever had before. More, more love between us than we ever had before. We were different people. Our marriage was different because we obeyed. We saw breakthrough in our hearts for each other because we obeyed God, even when it didn't make sense. You see, I, I, one of my favorite stories in Scripture is John chapter 5. Uh, and that's uh, verse 8. We're going to be looking at verse 8. You can turn there if you want. I think it might be up on the screen. I don't know. But Jesus looks at this man who's been lame on a mat for 38 years. Can you imagine? 38 years. And every day he's laying on this mat. And he, he, he needs people to bring him where he needs to go. And he's been living this way. And Jesus walks up. And Jesus says, rise, take up your mat, and walk. Let me just, let's just put ourselves there for a second. Are you joking me? This teacher's going to come into town. I've been laying on this thing for over 35 years, and he's telling me to get up as if it's just that easy. Does he know the seriousness of my situation? Does he understand that this thing is real? Does he understand I just can't? That's the truth. Like, that's just the way things are. But it doesn't say that. You know what he does? He says he gets up and he walks. See, I, I'm, I'm worried that when we read stories like this, we start to think that faith is some intangible thing that if we have it, then it earns God's move in our life. That is not what this story is communicating. In fact, what I really love about this story is that it has nothing to do with the man's faith that he goes, Jesus goes, oh, you did it. Oh, you said something that I wanted you to say. You proved it. Now I'll do this. Jesus did it, and he was calling him to walk in it. Jesus provided the healing. He provided the breakthrough, and he said, now walk in it. Do what you once couldn't do before. See, faith, faith is not just this, this oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this so I earn God's move in my life. Faith is actually my life, the way I live it, is changed due to my faith. My actions are shaped by what I actually believe in. I don't wait to have faith in Christ and because he does what I want him to. That's not the gospel. That is not the gospel. Faith requires us to move in action according to what we truly believe. And I, 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 what I love about this is that the man, the healing was already done. Can you imagine if he just sat there? And he said, I, I'm not going to embarrass myself here. I'm not going to go, I'm trying. Right? Like, that, that would have been me. No way, dude. I, I, know my, I know my story. It's on this mat. That's my story. That's it. Don't try to get my hopes up. How many of you have had that before? You've been in a moment, someone tried to encourage you, and you're like, don't try to get my hopes up. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Good, one honest person. Sweet. So, I, I don't want my hopes up. But instead, he walked in something that Christ already provided for him. And so you want to talk about breakthrough. Let's talk about obedience first. Let's talk about doing what God has called us to do. When God says step, when God says get up, when God says, hey, use that money to bless your wife, when God says, hey, go apologize to that person that you can't stand, it doesn't matter that it doesn't make sense. He's calling you to obedience. Jeremiah 7 verse 23 says this, However, I did give them this command, obey me, and then I will be your God, and you will be my people. Follow every way I command you so that it may go well with you. Can I share something with you? God's people, if we follow, we humble ourselves and we follow him, it will go well with you. That doesn't mean that everything you'd like to have in life is just going to fall in your lap. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, I know what needs to go well for you. And if you would just surrender your heart to me, if you would surrender your life to me, give me all of it, it will go well with you. I'll take care of you. I'll give you what you truly need, which leads me to my second thought today. And this was such a big one for me, and it really messed me up. 
Breakthrough isn't something to simply be prayed for, but something to be carried. Not just something to pray for, but something to be carried. See, you, you thought we were done with the man on the mat. See, this is one of my favorite parts about that story is Jesus said, rise, get up, take up your mat and walk. Take your mat with you. Take the thing that you were sick on. Take your sick bed and, and carry it with you so that wherever you go, people may see what's been done. People will see what, what once was a symbol of your sickness is now a symbol of your freedom. Can I tell you something today? A lot of times, I want to run away from the hard things in my life. Whenever Brooke and I come on the back end of something and it's over, you know what I do? <sighs> Put that back in the memory box, lock it away, don't want to think about it anymore. Is, is that just me or is anybody else there? Like, you don't want to think about the hard stuff. Uh, yeah, certainly. But... Jesus said, yeah, yeah, that's not how we're going to do this. You're going to take that, and you're going to walk. Guys, this is the word of our testimony. This is the word of your testimony. Stop looking at people when you have, like, let's say you have amazing children who follow Jesus, and they obey you, they love you, and they're respectful of people. A rarity, I know. But don't look at people when they say, wow, your kids are amazing. Go, yeah, I don't get it. Tell them about the hard moments. Tell them about the sacrifices that you made as a family so that your kids knew what it looked like to honor Jesus in your life, in your family. Tell them about the moments that you went through that were hard as a family so they can see your mat, so they can see that once was this area of brokenness is now this area of, of wholeness in your life. Like people need to know. Let's go back uh, to chapter 17, verses 8 through 16 in Elijah. If you, or, I'm sorry, in uh, 1 Kings, if you want to flip there, we're going to go back to the story of Elijah. I'm going to do a lot of reading for a second, so just bear with me. Verse 8, then the word of the Lord came to him. Get up and go to Zarephath that belongs to Sidon and stay there. Look, I have commanded a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. Need obedience again. So Elijah got up and went to Zarephath. When he arrived at the city gate, there was a widow gathering wood. Elijah called to her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup and let me drink. As she went to get it, he called to her and said, please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. Verse 12. But she said, as the Lord your God lives, and she doesn't, she's not part of the, of the old covenant, so just know that. As the Lord your God lives, I don't have anything baked only a handful of flour in the jar and a bit of oil in the jug. Just now I am gathering a couple of sticks in order to go prepare it for myself and my son so we can eat it and do what? Die. Does that sound like she was expecting a breakthrough? She's like, that's all we got, and this is the last we got, and we're done. Like, every, everything's, it's just over. It is what it is. But please don't take this last bit from us. This is what we were going to do. We were actually going to die with it. But see, Elijah just came from a situation where he watched God provide. He watched God meet the needs. He watched God give him everything he needed using the birds of the air. So you know what he did? He brought his mat with him. And he came into this situation. He said, you'll obey God first, right? Let's go to verse uh, 13. Elijah said, don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first, make me a small loaf from it and bring it out to me. Afterward, you may make some for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. The flour jar will not become empty and the oil jug will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. Here is her opportunity to learn from somebody who just walked out of a breakthrough. Here's her opportunity to learn from somebody who just watched God provide in their life. Right? So... She has barely anything left. And he says, take what little you have and make the man of God bread first. Look, I'm just telling you, if some of us were that woman, we're like, no way we're doing that. Are you nuts? Get out of here. Right? Like, you're crazy, right? And so what does she do? She does it. She does it. So she proceeded to do according to the word of Elijah. Then the woman, Elijah, and her household ate for many Days. The flour jar did not become empty, and the oil jug did not run dry. According to the word of the Lord, he had spoken through prophet Elijah. Guys, like this is because Elijah brought his breakthrough into that situation. He carried it. From the moment before, he carried it into this one. He said, you want to see God move in your life? Obey him. Walk in obedience to the Lord. And this is so special because, like I said, she's not even 
She's not even a Jew. She's not even part of the old covenant. But she walks in it anyway. That's powerful. Elijah said, I know you thought you were going to die, but God said. I know you thought this was your last meal, but God said. Right? Like God has something different. And so she follows this will and she sees the breakthrough of the Lord in her life. And, and if I can just share this with you, guys, I hear the term breakthrough in church life all the time, all the time. And if I can be honest, I mean, I, I like it. I like it. I'm all about praying for breakthrough. If you need breakthrough in finance, you need breakthrough in your marriage, you need breakthrough in, in your kids' lives um, because they got a bad attitude, something like that, like I will join with you and I will pray for that. But I believe that there are certain things that we have to be careful of, that we are praying for God's breakthrough in our things before caring for his breakthrough in us. Like we need God's breakthrough in us before we pray for him to just impact everything around us. Lord, give me all the things in my life, but don't touch this heart. I've been there. I've been there. You know why? Because God's shaping our heart and changing our heart it doesn't feel that good sometimes. It changes a lot of things in us that we don't want to give up. We don't want to give those things up. There should be a desire for breakthrough in me before we begin to ask God for a breakthrough for me, is what I'm trying to tell you. Let's not say, God, give me the things I desire. But when it comes to me, like, give me time. We're, we're all scared of the Lord having his hand in that area, but we need to surrender to him. Can I give you some examples of areas of breakthrough we pray for? Our marriage, that's an area we absolutely pray for. Finances, um, been there, done that. We'll probably do it again. Um, we pray for it in relationships. We pray for it in careers. Who at some point has needed a breakthrough in your career? You needed like a move in your career. Yeah, I, me, I've been there. We've all needed these, these moments where like, Lord, help me, give me, give me something in this area, give me something to walk in because right now I don't feel much hope. But where I feel like we don't pray as much for breakthrough in these areas, it's these ones. We don't, we don't pray for breakthrough in the way that we treat other people. Like this one, this one hurts me because, and, and I'm with you, guys, as people of God, let's stop going to church and worshiping Jesus and saying we love Jesus and then treating people like dirt, especially in this season right now. Let's just stop. Like, come on, that's, that's, there's such a higher call on your life than bring yourself down to get angry because someone disagrees with you. Get over it. I need to get over myself. You need to get over yourself. This thing is about God, not you, not me. You, we need breakthrough in this area. We're allowing God to break through into our hearts so we can become like him in the way we treat people and we love people and we care for people. We need, we need breakthrough in, in our faith so that when we face rough times, we're not sitting there going, all right, Lord, I guess when you show up, I'll believe again. We need, we need breakthrough in allowing the spirit of God to fill us up every day. That's what we need breakthrough in. That we wouldn't wake up and go, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Stop figuring it out. And allow him to meet your needs. Allow him to guide you. Allow him. He already has it figured out. I don't know about you, but I live in that place where I'm like, I'll figure this out. Brooke's like, babe, I don't know about this. I'm like, I got it. I think I'm special sometimes. I've, I've got, sometimes I've got the most pride in the world. And I'm like, I've got this thing worked out perfectly. And you know what always happens <laughs> something is messed up in my plan and it feels like the Lord's like, you gonna trust me now? That's, that's what it feels like. He's like, I've been waiting for this. You gotta get over yourself. You need breakthrough in your heart, Josh. I'm like, I know, Lord. Ezekiel 11 verse 19 says this. I will give them integrity of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will remove their heart of stone from their bodies and give them a heart of flesh. Guys, I've said this before, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm blaming myself here. From, pulpit, from the pulpit, you'll hear this. If you want to invite God into your heart, where does it say? Tell me where it says it. It's not about inviting God into this already busy heart. It's this scripture. It says, I will give them a new one. I will give them a new heart, a new spirit I will put within them. Are you kidding me? 
Like that's breakthrough. That's breakthrough in our life that we would sit there and go, oh my gosh, all that old stuff that's been churned up, all the wounds, all the, all the pains, all the things that I've worried about. He's given me a new heart. He's my life now. I don't just have to worry about the circumstances of life. I trust him, and I trust him completely, a new spirit, a new heart. I believe that when we begin to pray for breakthrough, we need to pray first that we would be carriers of breakthrough into situations, that we would carry breakthrough into whatever circumstances in our life, and whatever pain is in our life, and whatever difficult person, amen, is in our life. Like, those people exist, but you need to carry breakthrough into that moment. You know, there's this really awesome moment in the Old Testament when, when David is about to face the Philistines. You know what he does? He, he inquires of God and he says, Lord, I, I, we need victory. You know what God does? He gives them victory. But this is amazing. David named that place where they had that battle and received that victory, he named it the Lord bursts out. Some of us need to change our name today. Some of us need to change our name because this is the problem. When we're frustrated at work, you know who shows up? Frustrated Josh who walks in. He's like, what's today got in hold? You know who needs to show up? The Lord bursts out. That's who needs to show up. When you, when you got frustration in your marriage, you know who needs to show up? The Lord bursts out. Like that's, we need a new name today. We need to be able to walk into situations and say, this is breakthrough. I'm already carrying it. Whether the circumstance is what I want it to look like or not, I'm already carrying it. Breakthrough has already happened in Christ. Paul said this, he said, I count it all joy when I face these, the, basically pain of much kind, many kind. When I face these troubles of many kind, I consider it joy. You know why? Because Jesus is made known. Can I tell you what breakthrough is? Breakthrough is when you walk into a tough situation and you say, Jesus will be made known. That's breakthrough. That's breakthrough. Which leads me to my final thought, which is this. Breakthrough is the Lord's. Breakthrough is the Lord's. First Kings, let's go back to 17 verse 16 real quickly. The flower jar did not become empty and the oil jug did not run dry according to the word of the Lord he had spoken through the prophet Elijah. See, it wasn't according to Elijah figuring it out for her. It was according to the word of the Lord. And again, we need to reshape our thinking, reshape our minds, that when we wake up in the morning, we're facing something, we go, what does Jesus require of me today? How can I walk in obedience with the Lord today? That's what I need. Romans 8 verse 37 says this, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. It's just exhausting sometimes when we constantly live from this place of defeat. Like we come into something and we go like, oh, what am I going to do? Lord, give me victory. I imagine that Jesus is sitting up there and he's like, I've already done it. I've given you it. It's yours. You're a conqueror through me. My word tells you that. You don't need extra perfect little things to happen in your life for my grace to be made known in you. I, I just want to share... Um, this before I finish. Uh, this is a, a really personal story, um, and I don't like to share it. It's not something. Um, it's not something I, I, I just want really anybody to know. I like to shut it off from everybody, but I'm gonna say it anyway because um, I believe this is one of those areas where the Lord gave me breakthrough, but it didn't look like I wanted it to look like. Um, in January, some of you know this, some of you don't. In January, we were. Uh, pregnant with our second baby, and, um, and late in January, we got pregnant earlier, but late in January, um, we lost that baby, and, uh, and if I could do my best to be real here and not exaggerate anything, Lord, help me be honest here, that, it was literally the deepest pain I've ever experienced in my life, like, it, it, it felt like my identity was reduced to nothing. It hurt. And Brooke and I both, I mean, we were just done. Like, he's like, N I had no energy. I walked into work. Pastor Aaron probably felt so bad. I'm walking in, and I just felt like a zombie. That's, that's what I felt like. So the, it felt like the life within me was just gone. 
And, and if I can just share something with you, and I believe the Lord put this on my heart today. When people lose a baby, please stop asking how far along were they and reducing the impact they should feel based off that answer. If I can just say, I don't know, it just, it just feels like something people need to hear today. Maybe it's none of you and you all know that already. But like, let's, let's not reduce people's experience because it's not as grand as another one that we, we had or, or we knew someone who had. No, just let people feel what they feel because that's their baby regardless. Anyway, side note. So I'm, I'm hurting and, and frustrated and all these things, but people kept telling me this one thing and they, they kept saying this. It's okay to be mad at God. It's okay to be angry at God. My, and I'm being honest, and I know we all process things differently, but my honest question back is, why would I be mad at God? Why would I be angry at Him? He is literally the only reason that I can even just crawl on the ground through this season, let alone walk through it. Why would I be mad at Him? You know why? Because He's my breakthrough. Christ is our breakthrough. That's it. When we face a circumstance that we were not happy about, we weren't excited about that at all. It hurt so deeply. But here's what I knew, that Christ already broke through. Jesus already broke through. You know what I named that place, that dark place in our lives? I named it the Lord Burst Out. That's what I, that's what I name it today, this morning. I'm naming it that. You know why? Because we might not have seen something that we wanted to see, but God moved in our hearts. God moved in our lives. We already have the victory. Live from a place of breakthrough, not for it. Stop begging for breakthrough in everything in our life before we seek to, to receive breakthrough on the inside of us. That's what we needed. There was, let me tell you, very rarely are there seasons in your life where you can't think of something material to ask for. Is that, is that, would you say that that's true? This was one season of my life, I was like, I don't care for any material thing. I want, my, I want my baby back. But guess what? I received breakthrough much greater than all these things, much greater than all these troubles, much greater than all that pain that my wife and I went through because Christ is victorious. And that's enough. It's enough for me. It's enough for me. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. Some of you need to hear me say that. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. It doesn't mean that we can't pray for breakthrough in actual things in our life and circumstances in our life. I, I get that. But let's walk in breakthrough because it's already been done. Let's be people who carry our mat with us and not forget from circumstance. When he did this, we forget it. New circumstance. Lord, are you going to do this? He leads us out. New circumstance. Lord, are you going to do this? It's like he needs to redefine himself every time we have a problem in our life. Trust him. Uh, Pastor Aubrey says this all the time, and it's like such a simple statement, but it, it, every time he says it, it messes me up. He says he can be trusted. He can be trusted. I always just tell people who trust him, and they're one of the same thing, but some of you need to know today that he can be trusted. Faith is not this unreal thing that you need to stir up in you to get through a situation. Faith is is something we should have because he can be trusted. He's shown us every reason he should be trusted. So my prayer today is that we would be people who walk in breakthrough and seek breakthrough within before we seek it out. Before we seek it outside in all of the, the fruit in our lives, that we would seek it in the root of our lives. Is that making sense today? Let's pray together. Lord, I thank you so much for your love I pray we would rest in it today. I pray that as we read your word and as we grow in our relationship with you, Lord, that we would just truly be changed from the inside out. It's an old cliche, but it's the way that it needs to be. It's the way that your gospel shows this life is that it's done from the core of who we are outward. So, Lord, I pray where, where there are those who are seeking breakthrough in their life today, whether it's in their marriage, whether it's in their finances, whether it's in physical healing, I know that's going a lot right now, Lord. 
I'm not striving to, to hope that they don't pray for those things, but what I'm praying is that we would all receive what you want to do in our hearts first. We would all receive that new mind, new heart that your scripture talks about. We love you, Lord. We give you everything. We surrender our lives to you. In your name we pray. Amen.